The following is scheduled for a one hour time limit and is anything goes. Introducing, coming from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, in the Trib Live Radio Studios, WrestleZone.com reporter and columnist Justin Lapar. And his opponent, you. Call, tweet, email because you can go one on one with Justin Lamar in wrestling reality right now on Trib Live Radio. Well, it is Tuesday afternoon here, which means we are just getting days closer to the punch, kick, struggle in the corner festival that is the Royal Rumble. Justin Labar here, Trib Live Radio Wrestling Reality, one on one with me every single Tuesday afternoon, 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern. And of course, what a show we have coming up here. It is our go home show to the Royal Rumble this Sunday in St. Louis. So we're going to talk about that. We're also going to have a special co host who is here in studio. Mr. Matthew Justice, you might recognize the name Mac Hetfield. That's what he uh, worked under in the wonderful WWE developmental territory of FCW up until a few months ago. So uh, Matthew's going to speak out, I guess maybe publicly for the first time, uh, about some of that in his career and what he thinks that's going on. He'll take your questions uh, in, in, in phone call, email, or tweet form. But first, let's do what we do. Let's recap last night's go-home show of Monday Night Raw. We start the show with CM Punk continuing to take verbal shots at John Laurinaitis. John Cena then cuts him off, gives him some attitude, until finally Laurinaitis makes his way to the stage. He makes the Kane versus Zack Ryder false count anywhere match. He says if Cena gets involved, Ryder never gets another U.S. title match. Then out comes Vicky and company. She has her normal amount of heat. Dolph Ziggler, who has been putting himself at a new level lately, he says a few but effective words. And then Jack Swagger says... You're all dead meat. He might have the swagger, but his mic skills, uh, that's a different story. We get a tag team match between Cena, Punk, Swagger, Ziggler, which I like that they did this to start. Put some of your biggest names and top storylines all in one tag match to start. Try to keep the audience tuned in at the beginning. They've had a problem losing the audience in the opening half hour, so I like this spot. And after Swagger and Dolph get the win because of some Laronitis distraction, CM Punk then gives another reason to stay tuned to the program and watch because he challenges Johnny Laronitis and Johnny accepts and that is a one-on-one -on -one match as I've said for a while the build and lack of physicality that these two have had Punk and Laronitis they could draw for one match they could do one match people want to see Johnny Ace get his ass kicked it could work let's say for a February pay-per-view but now pretty much knowing this is going to happen it's a good test to see if people are going to tune in. It's, you know it's not going to be a legit match. You know there's going to be some type of swerve. It's not going to be a, a, a full-fledged one-on-one contest. But just the fact that they are promoting that they're going to be in the ring together and something could happen, it's a good test to see what the ratings and what the viewership, in fact, does and how much interest there really is to see Laronitis get his. Chris Jericho comes out for the first episode of the highlight reel in years. He panders to the crowd, brings out one of those uh, T-shirt shooting guns, I was hoping he wouldn't say a single word. Let him go to the Royal Rumble without saying anything. There is more money in mystery. But if he's going to say something, he said the right thing. He repeated what the videos had said for weeks. He said, this Sunday, it'll be the end of the world as you know it. CM Punk is the best in the world, as he proclaims. Let's see how their paths cross this Sunday. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. Zack Ryder shows some friction towards John Cena, tells him to stay out of the match. We get a uh, Ryder Kane battling around the arena. Kane finally choke slams Ryder through the stage. This has Ryder stretched out of the building to an ambulance as he apparently has a broken back. John Cena watches the ambulance ride off and then with a shaking, constipated look and stare at the camera, he attempts to foreshadow these about to embrace the hate. Uh, I think, personally, we just saw Cena's audition tape for the movie The Marine, but that's just me. Then we get Jinder, Jinder Mahal versus Sheamus, and uh, last night I used Jinder Mahal's match as a good time on Twitter to promote today's radio show, so I'll use Jinder Mahal's match in this recap to promote that coming up in just a few moments, former FCW star Matt Hetfield is going to be here in studio, so you may make sure you stick around. Sheamus wins, by the way. Funkasaurus time with Brodus Clay, whose dance moves continue to get better. He squashes Heath Slater, and the dancing resumes. Miz versus our truth loser will be the number one entrant in the Royal Rumble. Surprised they gave the match on Raw. I would have, uh, I would have rather these guys draw this out a little bit more. Let their first real contact be in the Rumble match. They can carry this into February, get more miles out of it. But perhaps they have other plans for one or both of them. Our truth ends up beating the Miz. Miz will be number one in the Rumble. I do think, 
as number one so often does, The Miz is a perfect fit to have that strong 45 minute plus run in the Rumble match. Laronitis shadow boxing warming up. Otunga gives him a fax that just came in from the board of directors. We then go to the ring. Laronitis in there with uh, CM Punk getting ready for the quote unquote match. Laronitis reads the fax, which basically in a nutshell says his job is under review, and next Monday Triple H will be at Raw to conduct a formal job evaluation. Punk says now there's even less holding him back from knocking him out. Otunga attacks Punk. Punk eventually takes care of Otunga. Then CM Punk gives the GTS to Johnny, and Ziggler comes in, hits Punk with a zigzag, stands over him, and that's how we close Raw. All of it was good and fitting, except why, why, why does Punk hit the GTS on Laronitis? Why use that now? Why waste that now? Let him put Johnny up on his shoulders and let Dolph make the save. But bottom line, one of the best content and bookings, in my opinion, of Raw in quite some time. I hope, with the curiosity of what happens between Punk and Johnny Ace in the title match, Kane versus Cena, Jericho in the Rumble, and the fact that it's the Rumble and it always provides some swerves, I hope the pay-per-view buys are strong. Road to WrestleMania starts off in the right way. This is the right way to start off Wrestling Reality 101 here on Trib Live Radio. We're going to take a break. When we come back, Matthew Justice joining me. 412-320-7925 is the number to call. Sports Talk at TribWeb.com is the email. Tweet me at Justin Labar or at Thrash Justice, Trib Live Radio, we will return. <laughs> 